here we are on the users page, which is basically split into two sections, uh, accounts and permissions. The first option, browse list for users, we can see the list of users in our site. Obviously clicking on these headings will enable us to quickly sort them. We can also filter, uh, and there's quite a lot of filters available. So we could filter, for example, by uh, the town, or perhaps filter by a certain country, if we're looking for people in a certain area. Um, and also, you know, lots of values in here that enable you to, to hone your search in quite uh, specifically, including things around the last time or the first time people actually accessed the site. So if you are if you have a, a large site with hundreds or thousands of users, this filtering enables you to focus in on the people that you're actually trying to find quite easily. We can also perform bulk actions on users. So we have the same filtering again so that we're able to uh, focus in on the users that we actually want. We're then able to select users and add them to the selection. Uh, I've got two users there already. We uh, then can perform actions on those selected users. So I can quickly send all those users a message. I could delete them, obviously use with care. Uh, I could force a password change for all those users if I feel there's been a security breach, for example. So bulk user actions uh, can be extremely handy in the uh, you know in the event that you need that sort of capability we can of course add a new user manually uh, just in the same way as you probably created your own administrator account maybe all the required information for a, a new user we do have default preferences as well so for every user they have their preferences pages and this enables you to set up some of those preferences and as a default and perhaps one of the ones that uh, a couple that probably worth mentioning first of all forum tracking um, if you switch this on then it actually highlights the new posts in the forums for users which if you have a forum driven site you know with active forums then that's really useful the other one that's probably useful is uh, you know almost essential really is here if you have a very active site and you have new newer users to Moodle then the default is that for every message, for every post that's made in a forum, they'll receive an email message. And that can be quite overbearing in their inbox if they're not used to that. So if you change this to, for example, complete, then once a day, we'll get a digest with all those posts in. And then, you know, you can obviously read through that email and perhaps click on the ones that you want to actually read. So perhaps a little less overbearing for users when, when they're in courses with highly active forums. We can also add profile fields. Um, here I've added a profile field for gender. Uh, we tend to deal with a lot of international clients, so sometimes we don't recognize whether a, a first name is male or female. So we've added a gender field. And um, if we just take a quick look at that, what we can see is that we've set up that the, the field is required that it's displayed on the sign up page and that the options available are male or female. Um, it would probably be a good idea to specify a default value, which in this case, I might just say unspecified at this stage. When people come to the sign up form, they'll actually see a field for gender and they'll have to select male or female from that. So you can use these profile fields in lots of different ways. You may have, uh, there are lots of options so that you could have, for example, a profile field, which um, if you have a, a, a multi-site campus, it would actually, you'd actually be able to say, you know, North region or South region or West region campuses, whatever. And that could be something that you actually filter by when you're dealing with users, for example, or cohorts. So, um, useful to think about is there any is there any extra information we want to capture on our on our profile fields we have cohorts cohorts are kind of thought of as site level groups so uh, an administrator can create a cohort multi or multiple cohorts 
uh, important to give them a clear description and then simply add members, assign members into that cohort. Now the advantage of cohorts is that uh, cohorts can be enrolled within a course. So you may have a couple of courses and a teacher adds a cohort that will then automatically add all the students in that cohort into that course. And because it's synchronized, when the administrator adds new people into this cohort, perhaps as they join the organization, then they are automatically enrolled into all those courses that have used that cohort enrollment method as well. So it can be a very efficient way to manage the enrollment within courses. Um, doesn't work in every situation, but uh, if you are a larger organization and you have uh, you know, a clear um, a clear strategy about how you're managing users then cohorts is certainly something that you may want to look at and very easy to just add new cohorts from this page. If you are creating lots of new users perhaps at the beginning of the semester or term or the beginning of the year then you can upload users from a CSV file just a comma separated text file that um, can be created in, in a spreadsheet program and then exported as C C CSV usually. And this enables you to just create a text file with usernames, uh, a password, first name, last name, email address. And in fact, you can add other things in there as well, such as course names and gr even groups, so that when people are uploaded through this process, they also get enrolled into courses at the same time. You can in fact do that later as well just by updating those records. If you have a lot of users to create this is a much quicker way than manually creating them one at a time and it is fairly straightforward. Just make sure that you read the um, the help on Moodle Docs about how to do this. One of the great things is that after you've created your file and you come to try and upload it, you can preview the data and see what's going to happen when you create these users. The last thing you want to do is to create, uh, you know, a hundred or a thousand users incorrectly. That then takes a little bit of sorting out. And finally, here on the accounts, we've got the ability to upload user pictures. So I can imagine perhaps in a school where accounts have been created and then maybe we take photographs of the of the students, we can then quickly upload all these images and associate them with the correct user, uh, either by ID or username or, or ID number, so that we then have uh, control over the existing uh, images that are perhaps being used by students. Um, there are certainly situations where you might need to, to do that. Under the permissions, I'm just going to pull out a few of the most important areas here. Uh, permissions is one of the most uh, flexible and yet also potentially confusing areas for Moodle administrators, particularly new administrators. So first of all, we have a load of uh, user policies, and this is just uh, the way the site is set up and how it works for users. So the role for a guest user should be guessed quite quite logically um, but we then have options for example like if if we have courses that allow guest access do we want to just allow guests to go straight into that and um, you know the default is no but on in many cases if you're if you've got a, a public site and you've got maybe some free courses or promotional courses then logging people in automatically might just make that process a little bit easier for them. Lots of options in here, including uh, some controls around the number of users displayed within, you know, course selectors of courses and so on. And also a link to the Gravatar system. That's just a web-based system which allows a user to, to add a, an image of themselves. And then that image can be used th automatically throughout any other websites, any other systems that that can link to Gravatar. So if I have my Gravatar image online, uh, I can, I can, we can say yes, enable that, and and it will there, therefore, automatically display that image from Gravatar.com on on the Moodle site. Site administrators. Obviously, we have a list of our site administrators, and one thing I would say is we don't want to see 
10 or 20 people in here we really do want to see on a secure site maybe uh, maybe four or five administrators maximum uh, administrators have total control and even with the best will in the world an administrator can make a mistake they can delete something accidentally they can change a function that uh, has unexpected consequences so keeping the number of administrators to a minimum is really good uh, as a first step in terms of site security and of course all those administrators should have very good passwords we can define the roles so uh, Moodle has as I'm sure you know many different roles and each role has different permissions so a teacher you know a teacher role will will be the person assigned to, to run a course they can mark assignments they can uh, add new content delete content and so on not editing teachers uh, sort of step down from that so they may be sort of marking courses or supporting them but they're not actually changing the content and so on then obviously we have our student and guest accounts it can be useful if you if you need to make a small change maybe a small change to the way the non-editing teacher role works you can actually come in here and see all all the permissions and capabilities and and this screen is actually quite frightening and you do need to read up about this before you make changes but basically there are hundreds of options that can be changed so at the moment we for example we allow um, a teacher to edit the blocks in tag pages that's a permission and a capability they have if i wanted to take that away i would simply unclick this and save and that's then for all non-editing teachers across the site that's then made that change um, we do have to be extremely careful with these things it's very easy to accidentally uh, give people too many permissions and there are some good little uh, sort of highlights to remind you that if you enable this, then there could be a risk associated with that. We can assign system roles. And this is probably one of the biggest mistakes we see with uh, Moodle sites and administrators. Because anything you assign here is assigned throughout the site. So if I... Um, so we do see, for example, people add students at, at the system level. And that then means they're a student right across the site in every single course. Or, or we add a teacher here and suddenly they're a teacher in every single course. Um, that isn't the right way to do it. This really is a specific uh, function where you may need, for example, uh, an auditor, someone who can visit every single course, but maybe isn't interacting with them. Maybe they're just monitoring things. That would be a good use of a system-wide role. But, uh, or a manager or a course creator, someone who can, who can help the main administrator. But yeah, this isn't the place where we add teachers and students. We can check system permissions. So for a particular user, Sylvester here, we can show this user's permissions. And of course, they're an uh, authenticated user within the system. And we'll be able to quickly see what they are allowed to do. And if you have a problem with, with someone saying, I, I think I should be able to do this and I can't, then th this could be a place that you look just to double check that we haven't got some permissions issue. There's a capability overview as well. What we're able to do is look at different permissions and look at different users and now we can see the different permissions and who actually has permissions to do that not set obviously not set but usually quite often in here you might see allowed or yes or no so this this can be useful just to give an overview or uh, in, perhaps investigate your settings to see whether there's something that that you could alter to make life easier for people we can assign user roles to cohorts this isn't the same as assigning users to cohorts. This is assigning a role to cohorts. You may perhaps assign a mentor role or a parent role to a cohort. Um, it, it's an unusual thing to need to do. It's not something that most sites would, would have to use. If you have a situation where you do want to, to create some slightly unusual user context roles for cohorts then this can be a way to do it worth reading up on the documentation about how that works and then finally any unsupported 
roles. This will usually only show information if, for example, you've imported a course or restored a course from one site to another and the other site had some roles that were highly customized that don't exist on the new site or if it was from a very old Moodle site and you're restoring this course into this new Moodle site uh, those old rules roles may no longer exist and this just flags that up for you <laughs>